grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to welcome you to another Freedom Moment. It's Sunday, November 20th, 2022. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you and bless you and praise you, Lord. We thank you once again for getting us through another week, getting us to this beautiful day, getting us, Lord God, before your presence so we can ask you for your mercy and grace. Father, we thank you for your healing hand. We thank you for your protecting hand. We thank you, Lord God, for everything you're doing in our lives, in and through us, Father. We thank you. We thank you for this season, Lord God. We get an opportunity, Lord, to get together with many family and friends. And Father, we thank you once again for uh, watching over our nation, Lord, and protecting us up to this point. Continue to bring peace, Lord God, to our nation. Help us, Lord God, with our decision-making process in our government, Lord. We ask you, Lord God, for peace so that we can enjoy worshiping you, praising you in this beautiful country of ours. We thank you, Father. Be with us right now, Lord God, as we open up your word. Help us to devour it, Lord God. Help us to walk away from this freedom moment different than the way we walk to it. Father, we give you all the glory and all the praise. It's in Jesus' name we ask. Everyone in agreement said, Amen. Looking for fellowship, prayer, or Bible study? You can get in touch with us at home or on the go. Just go to www.freedomfellowshiprb.org or you can catch us for updates on Twitter at Freedom Rockaway. We'll see you there. Scripture lesson for this morning is taken from the Gospel according to St. John. We're looking at John's Gospel, the sixth chapter, and we're reading from the New King James Version. John chapter 6, beginning at verse 5. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now, there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down. And likewise of the fish, as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Therefore they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which were left over by those who had eaten. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. The text for today's message is taken from the first letter of Paul to the church in Corinth. We're looking at 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, and we're taking a portion of two verses, verses 23 and 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 and 24. Listen to what it says. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We bless you. We thank you, Lord God, as we come into your presence. You, who continue to provide for us, both physically and spiritually, we thank you, Lord God. 
We thank you for your word. Father, we thank you that you're giving us what we need to feast on. Not just today, not just this week, but for the rest of our lives. Father, we thank you. Not only are you providing for us what we need to feast on, you're also providing for us, Lord God, a way for us to digest, a way for us to grow, to mature, to hear you, Lord God. We thank you once again, Father, for what only you can do in and through us. Father, we're asking you for your anointing. Send it down. It makes teaching easy. It makes understanding even easier. Father, we'll give you all the glory and we'll give you all the praise. It's in Jesus' name we ask. Everyone in agreement say, Amen. Paul is recounting the intimate dinner that Jesus had with his disciples. He's recounting what he shared with his disciples. And what did he show them? You got you to gotta ask yourself this. Listen to what he showed them. His pattern for giving thanks. Amen. Giving thanks in everything. Yes. He showed them that, that thanks builds a positive atmosphere. He showed them that, that thanks builds your resilience. He showed them that thanks builds your relationships. Yes. Jesus was trying to show them something about thanks. And here we are in a season and Thanksgiving is upon us. And here we are enjoying time with friends and family. And it's a feast, praise God. We've got a lot to be thankful for. Yet, Thanksgiving into Christmas marks the time of the most stress by any individual. Yes, this time is marked by more depression and more stress than any other time. Why is that? Stress during Thanksgiving? Well, it's because we don't understand thanks. That's really what the issue is. We don't really understand what thanks is all about. As a matter of fact, many only celebrate one day. <laughs> yeah. When the Lord called us to be thankful always. Need a title for today's message. <clears throat> It's expressing thanks. Praise God. We should be expressing thanks. And it's interesting because, you know, I, I went through uh, so many scriptures, so much of the Old Testament. I did so much research in the scripture. And it's interesting because when we think of thanks, you know, we should have a, a solid understanding of it, but I'm looking in, in the, uh, the hall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. I'm looking through all of the different Bible characters, and I found something very interesting. And, and you, you should research this for yourself. It's not noted among the bulk of Bible characters. You look at Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You don't see them saying, hey, thanks. You don't see uh, Adam and Eve saying, hey, you know, Lord, thanks. You don't see Moses uh, and Joshua just saying, thanks. You know, you see David writing songs of thanks and thanksgiving. But that's it. I mean, when you look at the majority of the stories and, and what took place within the Old Testament, the New Testament, you don't find an enormous amount of Bible characters giving thanks. Now, now, why is that? You must ask yourself, why? Well, it's possibly because, you know, uh, thanks is a component of praise. You know, maybe that's it. But thanks goes deeper than just words. <laughs> Amen. So we need to, we need to understand what thanks is all about. Let's, let's get a, an understanding of thanks. Here's what we need to know about thanks. Because again, it's not just about words. So we need to find out exactly what it is so that we can delve into it and we can be blessed and be a blessing. What is it about thanks that we need to know? 
Well, here's one of the things we can find out. There should be thanks before enjoyment. Amen. Yeah. Thanks should be before enjoyment. Listen to what David writes in the 100th Psalm. Psalms 100 and verse 4. He says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. What a beautiful psalm. I love that psalm. It's one of my favorites. But David says, before entering in, he says, gates, gates. Yes, that's the entry point. <laughs> Amen. Getting in, just getting in. Don't forget, thanks goes before you even get in. It means before you get into the realm of the comforter. Oh, I, I want to get in into God's presence. I, I, I want him to be able to hear me. I want him to be able to see me. Well, you know something? Before you get into his presence, before you get into the gate, huh? you got to enter in with thanks. And it's interesting because uh, the writer uses the, the plural word. He says gates, gates with an S at the end, plural meaning that there are multiple areas where thanks is the key. Let me say that again. Did you realize that there are multiple areas in your life where thanks really is the key? If you want to enjoy anything in your life, remember, thanks comes before the enjoyment. Amen. You know, we, we have to understand exactly what he means by before. Well, the Bible says after he had given thanks. Mm -hmm. Come on. After he had given thanks, then he broke the loaf. In other words, watch this. Before the loaf comes the thanks. You know, each of us, when you talk to people, they say, you know, I, I want a loaf. I want a full loaf. But let me say this to you. Thanks comes before the enjoyment. Before you enjoy the loaf. Hey, Amen. You should be giving thanks. Thanks comes before. Most of us, we practice thanks afterwards. <laughs> Amen. Some of us don't even do that. Huh? We wait for God to bless us, and then we like, oh, oh yeah, uh, I had that coming to me. No, you don't. We usually teach kids to say thanks uh, after they get benefited, but you really should say it before. Huh? When it comes to our relationship with God, it should be before the enjoyment. Here's the problem. Paul writes in his, in his letter to the church in Rome, in the first chapter, check it out. Go to Romans chapter one and check it out for yourself. I believe it's verse 21. Um, Paul says this. He says, even though they knew God, they didn't glorify him as God or give him thanks. Wow. Even though they knew God, they didn't glorify him as God, and they didn't give him thanks. Wow. Pastor, what are you trying to say? Watch this. You should acknowledge the source. Yeah. Before you break the loaf, acknowledge the one who gave it to you. <laughs> Amen. Hey, we call it grace, but it's not about just saying grace at the table. It's about saying, Lord, you, you are the source of all of my blessings. It's you. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, thanks before your day begins. Hey, try that. Try try before you leave the house, huh? getting on your knees and saying, Lord, I want to thank you for the start of this day. Before your day begins, before your check comes, don't, don't just say, Lord, I just want to thank you for this check. Yeah, I, I want to thank you for a couple of bucks. No, 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 no. Thank him before your check comes. Lord, you're always providing for me. Check or no check, huh? Job or no job. You're the one, you're the source of all of my enjoyment. Hey, before your wedding day, you, you better thank him. <laughs> Amen. Don't just wait to see how things are going to turn out. If you want to enjoy life, start thanking him before. Acknowledge the source of your blessings even before you're blessed. Real thanks comes before you start real enjoyment. Amen. Before that loaf, give thanks. That's what he did. What else does he teach us by this, this scripture? What else do we need to know about thanks?
Thanks not only is before enjoyment, thanks also shares. We need a thanks that shares. Amen. Yes. Thanks doesn't hold and hold and hold. It shares. I like the way the writer Matthew records Jesus' words. Listen to what Matthew says. In Matthew chapter 10, he says what Jesus said in verse 8. Jesus is saying, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, watch this, freely give. Wow. Wow. Hey, listen, you're showing thanks when you share. Listen to what he said. He said, freely give because it was given freely to you. You're an individual that's sharing because you're thankful. Wow. You're thankful that you got it free. You should be giving it free. The Bible says after he gave thanks, remember, he broke it. After he gave thanks, he broke it. Broken. Why did he break the bread? To share. Come on. He said, this is my body broken for you. He's looking to share. He says, my body broken for you. And what does Jesus say when he says, my body broken for you? He's saying you need to share of yourself. Yeah. If you're thankful, watch this. Thanks comes along with sharing. If you're truly thankful, you're going to share yourself. You're going to share what you have. Amen. What you've been blessed with. Remember, it's thanksgiving. Hey, let me say that again. It's thanksgiving. <laughs> wow. The best way to show thanks is to give. Let me say that again. The best way to show thanks is to give. The best way to show ingratitude is to be ungiving. Yes. It's just the opposite when you when you're when you're giving, you're showing thanks. You're showing that you're not showing gratitude when you are begrudging others and not sharing. Remember the scripture lesson? Huh? He said, "What do we have here?" And they said five loaves and two fishes. Right? And and listen, he blessed and he broke. He shared Remember something, when you give thanks, you'll share with thousands. Hey, you'll, you'll be able to feed thousands. How do you do it? Thanks. Amen. When you start thanking God, huh? you'll start sharing. When you start sharing, you'll thank God more. Amen. You'll show God that you're thankful for his blessings by sharing with others. What else do we know about thanks? It's not, it's not just done after enjoyment, it's done before enjoyment, it's done to share, and it's done during stress. Amen. You should have thanks during stress. Huh? Some people, you know something, they give thanks when they're not stressed out, but I'm telling you, you should be thanking him while you're stressed. Amen. Right in the middle of it. Look what the prophet Jonah said in Jonah chapter 2 and verse 9. Jonah from the belly of the whale, but I with shouts of grateful praise will sacrifice to you. Jonah became thankful in the fish's stomach. Amen. You talk about stress. Hey, he was thankful. He became thankful. What is God trying to do? Bring thanks out. And listen, What's he trying to do? Show you to be thankful during stress, during hard times. Amen. Real thanks comes out during stressful moments. Hey, I'm thankful, Lord. I'm thankful you're with me in the middle of this. Jonah was thankful for the mission. <laughs> yeah. Was he thankful for the swimming lesson he got? <laughs> Amen. You remember he got thrown overboard. Was he thankful for being swallowed? Well, according to this scripture, he's in the, in the whale's belly and he's thankful. 
Are you thankful? Remember the, uh, the scripture for our text. It's the Last Supper. Yeah, that, that, that was the, the, the number one stress time for, for Jesus. Huh? That was his toughest meal. Come on. It was the Passover, but it was his toughest meal. That's why they call it the Last Supper. And, you know, we're not called to smile all the time, but we are called to give thanks. Yes. You're not called to smile all the time. That's, a, that's not even realistic. Huh? Paul writes his letter from a jail cell to 1 Thessalonians. In the church in Thessalonica, he writes in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 18, he says, in everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. In everything. He didn't say for everything. Hey, we're not supposed to be thanking God for cancer. We're not thanking God for trouble. We're not thanking God for being broke. We're not thanking God for being out of work. But what we're doing is thanking him during, in the middle of our situation. We're still giving him thanks. You know why? He's in charge. And he's the source of all of our comfort. He is the source of all of our enjoyment. Thanks during stress. What are you really trying to say, Pastor? I'm trying to say that you, you need to remember something. No birth without stress. <laughs> what's, what's he trying to birth in you? What's he trying to bring out of you? Huh? Some of your, your, your biggest stress moments caused you to be the strongest. Amen. Come on. What are the times you remember the most? The hardest times. So thank God. Because during the stress, he's trying to birth something in you. Look. There's no blessings without burdens. Huh? We've talked about this before. David said, cast your burden upon the Lord and he'll sustain you. That word for burden there is really a blessing that comes by way, the burden that comes by way of a blessing. That's what he was talking about. Hey, look, when you ask for kids, they're blessings. But you know something? They're also responsibility. They're burdens. You ask for a job. A job is a blessing. But guess what? You got to get to that job. You got to do the job. Huh? It becomes a burden. These things that we're thanking God for, many times we should thank him that he's bringing us through the stress to make us stronger. No blessing without burdens. Remember Daniel? Daniel the prophet. Go back and read. When you get to the sixth chapter of Daniel, it says that the government officials were trying to catch him, right? They were trying to trap him. And so what they did was they went to the king and they said, hey, king, why don't you make a decree? For the next 30 days, nobody can go and pray to any other God, but only to, to ask you for anything and only thank you for anything. Is that okay? Let's write it. Uh, anybody doing the, anything other than that? If they're not blessing you and thanking you and asking you for things, king, then let them be thrown in, in the lion's den. And the king signed it. He didn't realize what was going on. So he signed the decree. Well, right after the decree was signed, Go back and read it in Daniel chapter 6. When the 30-day decree was signed by the king, look what Daniel did. He, he opened his window and he thanked God three times a day in front of everybody. <laughs> Amen. What did he do? He Watch this. He thanked God three times a day. And it's amazing because he got thrown in the lion's den, right? Go back and read it. He gets thrown in the lion's den. But I want to show you something. Let's go back to that prior point. Don't forget, you thank God during the stress, but thank him before the enjoyment. The Bible says that Daniel was thanking God before he was thrown in the lion's den. He was thanking God before he got trapped. He was thanking God all along. And look what happened when he got thrown in the lion's den. The lions just sat there with him. <laughs> Amen. The lions just sat there all night with him. And then the king woke up the next morning. You can go and you can look up the story. The king woke up and said, Daniel, are you still around? And he said, yes, king. God has, has sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth. They're just sitting here laying with me. And then the king pulled him out and threw those guys in that trapped him. And, and instantly the lions got their appetite back. Go back and read it. Look, we need to show thanks during stress. Real thanks is shown during stress. Let's get your takeaway point.
Here's a takeaway point. Expressing thanks to God is not done only in word. It's also shown by deeds. Amen. That's the core. You need to know that it's not about talk. Not only in word. It's shown by deeds. Look, when you go back in the hall of faith, you find out that these individuals, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, and all of the, uh, the apostles, and all of the people you see, the characters, they were doing things to show their thanks to God. Amen. What do you need to know? Huh? Where does this lead us, Pastor? It leads us to a final point. Thanks brings a covenant. Yes. Real thanks brings a covenant. Look at Matthew chapter 9 and verse 28. Jesus is walking through and the blind men are, are, are begging him for healing. And listen to what he says in, in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 28. The blind men came to him and he asked them, listen to what Jesus said. Do you believe that I'm able to do this? And listen to what they said. Yes, Lord, they replied. Wow. Yes. What's a covenant? Let me break it down for you. Ready? A covenant is just an agreement. Let me say that again. A covenant is just an agreement. Amen. When you, when you, when you agree with God, you're thanking him. Amen. God is looking for our agreement with him. That's it. He's looking for our agreement. He's looking for a covenant. Do you, do you believe that I'm able to do this? Yes, I agree. I agree with you. What is God looking for? Covenant and agreement. He'll agree with you. He'll come into covenant with you. That's the best way to show thanks. You want to show thanks to someone? Agree with them. Amen. Let me ask you a question before we close. Do you agree with his word? <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, that's what we really need to ask ourselves uh, before this holiday that we call Thanksgiving. Do you even agree with him? Have you come into an agreement with your father in heaven? Because that's a big part of thanks. Do you agree? You know, the reality is believers don't thank God to be polite that's not, that's not what, you know, it's not like a magic word. You know, we, we teach kids this. Say thank you. Say thank you. No, that's not what we, we're here to do. We don't say, believers don't say thanks to God to be polite. We thank him to reinforce our dependence upon him. We're trying to say we agree. You're our source. You're our only source. And we need you every moment, every hour. We come into agreement with you, Lord, that you are the healer. You are the provider. You are the way maker. So we thank you because we're in total agreement with you. Pastor, what are you trying to say? It's simple. I want you to know this. More thanks brings more of his presence. Yes. He wants to be around the individuals that are in agreement with him. Look, heaven is a place where People who are in agreement with God go to hang out with him. That's all heaven is. Let's not, let's not uh, make it a, a, a complicated thing. Heaven is a place for people who are in agreement with God, who say, I'm in agreement with you. Thanks. Thanks for a great covenant. Thanks for being our source. Hell is a place where people disagree. No, I don't like you, and I don't like what you have to say, and I'm going my own way. And look, that's what hell's really about. Hey, you want to see a covenant? You want to see agreement? You want to see thanks? You want to see God's presence? Come into agreement with him. The more thanks, the more of his presence. And you know that's true. Think about it. Who would you rather feed? The person who says thanks verbally, but they only eat two bites of your food and throw it out? Or would you rather feed a person who sits down and devours the whole plate after saying thanks. It's the deed that counts, right? It's not just the words. 
Pastor, what are you trying to say? Give thanks like he gave thanks. He showed us. He showed us what to do. He broke bread. Remember, watch this. He gave thanks. He broke bread. And look what happened after the bread, after the body. Remember? It says, the wine came. He says, this is the new covenant in my blood shed for you. Look, what's going to happen after thanks? A covenant. He gave us a covenant of his blood so that we can not only thank him and live out the thanks in front of him, we can show others how to come into agreement with God. My friends, do you need the peace of God, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the salvation of God through Christ Jesus? I challenge you to humble yourself before him now in the privacy of your home and talk to him. Ask him for forgiveness of your sins and invite him to be in charge of your life through the Lord Jesus. Trust him because he sees, he hears, and he'll respond to your honest prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you again just to say thanks for not just this season, not just this day, but your presence. We're in agreement with you because you are our source. Help us, Lord God, to thank you in everything before the enjoyment. Help us to reach out to you, Lord God, in covenant. Help us, Lord God, this week to be more than just thanking you by word, but by deeds. Help us to share the love of Christ with others. Go with us now, protecting us on every side from things seen and unseen. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Everyone in agreement said, Amen. Remember, John 8, 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed.